the cause of the rising and the falling of our ministries is because we don't have a covenant with God. No covenant. What you are doing, you do it on your own. This You do as you like. No contract with God. No deal with the giver. So, since you are here, you need to know something. You have a ministry. You have what? So, do you agree with me? The, what is your ministry then? What is your ministry? Me, my ministry is road map. This is my ministry. What is your ministry? What is your ministry? Huh? Your horizon. Now you're upon the rock. Revelation of Christ. Apostle. Asian city. So that is your ministry. Is what? That's your ministry. Your ministry, sir. Specialized project practice. Business person. Power of God ministry. Do you see different ministries here? So we have ministers here. Ministers in business and ministers in the word. And also professional ministers in the in the in the in the in the government. Your ministry, sir. A tequin. Ministry, you are you are a tequin. That is your ministry, Mama. Medical doctor. That is your ministry. Uh, for me. Ministry. Leadership. Ministry. In construction. Business. Ministry. So we want to talk about ministry today, and I pray that the Lord open your heart. How to complete our ministry? This is what we want to talk about today. How to complete our ministries. Why we are talking of completing our ministry is because ministry has two departments or two wings. If I may put it, I think if I say wings, you understand. You know wings? Huh? Two offices. Every ministry has two departments or two wings. That is administration department and operational department, which is spiritual department. So do you look at your ministry now? It has two what? Two what? Two wings, two departments, two offices. That is administration department and operational department, which is the spiritual department of our ministries. These two ministries, they must work together to complete the ministry of God here on earth. Your operational, which is spiritual department, and administration department. The operational department of a ministry is the most important department because it operation is to destroy the work of the devil and put the word of God into the heart of the people. While the administration ministry is to sustain the spiritual ministry wing because a bird cannot fly with one wing. Sometimes I look at people when, they, when, a, when a, a bird is injured trying to fly. They feel so sorry. They don't realize that God is speaking to them. Because God speaks in ironies, in riddles and in parables. So, oh, shame. Oh, shame. 
when you, a bet is running. They don't know that God is saying, look at yourself. You are trying to fly with one wing. You say, ah, shame. That is yourself. You are having self-pity on yourself. For these two ministries, the operational ministry or department and administration department, for them to work together in harmony, you must have a covenant with God. Many of us, we are doing the work of God without a covenant. We are doing business without a covenant. A contract, a deal with your creator since he's the one who sent you to earth. No deal, no contract. Then you are doing ministry. You are doing business. Everybody know you out there. People are cheering you up. People are celebrating you. But there is no covenant. Let's go to Genesis 28. Genesis 28. I'm going to read for you from that verse 10. Meanwhile, Jacob left Beersheba and traveled towards Haran. At sundown, he arrived at a good place to set up a camp and stopped there for a night. Jacob found a stone to rest his head against and lay down to sleep. As he slept, he dreamt of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven. He saw the angels of God going up down the stairway. At the top of the stairway stood the Lord and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather, Abraham, the father of your father, Isaac. The ground you are lying on belongs to you. I'm giving it to you and your descendant. Your descendant will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out in all directions, to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south, and all families of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants. What more? I'm with you. That is another promise. I'm with you. He says, I'm with you and I will protect you wherever you go. That is another promise again. One day I will bring you back to this land. Another promise again. I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised you. That is God. Then Jacob woke up from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. I was even aware of it. But he was also afraid and said, what an awesome place this is. It is none other than the house of God, the gateway to heaven. The next morning, Jacob got up very early. He took the stone. He had rested his head against and he set it upright as a memorial pillar. Then he poured olive oil over it. He named the place Bethel, which means house of God, although it was previously called Lars. Then Jacob made this vow. If God will indeed be with me, protect me on this journey. If he will provide me with food and clothing, and if I return safely to my father's home, then the Lord will certainly be my God. And this memorial pillar I have set up will become a place of worshiping God. And I will be present to God, and I will present to God a tenth of everything he gives me. This is what we call covenant. What is the meaning of covenant? Covenant means what is yours is mine and what is mine is yours.
he told God, if you will do all these things you, I dreamt of in my vision, my dream, I will give you tenth of everything you gave me. That is covenant. The, the cause of the rising and the falling of our ministries is because we don't have a covenant with God. No covenant. What you are doing, you do it on your own. This You do as you like. No contract with God. No deal with the giver. That is why I say to you, a bird cannot fly with one wing. It can only try. This means many are supposed to be very far. They are limping. Because it's only one wing. Instead of flying, and mount up like an eagle, and run, and not get weary. Covenant. No covenant. I want to see the There's no agreement. You do what you do the way you do it. This is the cause of the rising and falling of many ministries. Whether it's business, this, you are up, you are down, you are up, you are down. There's no covenant. God is a covenant keeping God. If you read this book. He's a, he's a covenant-keeping God. He's a God of covenant. Each time you move with him, he wants you to agree with him. What are you going to do? How will you be doing it? I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to protect you. I'll make you known all over. I'll make you a source of help. There must be a covenant. If not, you continue to rise, continue to fall. You pick up again, pick up again, before you know it, your time to leave this earth has come. Covenant. Look at the testimony of this young boy pilot. When we say we, we pay over half a million in a year to take him through. That money is covenant money. Because for me to have half a million in my pocket, with so much responsibility, how will I keep a money lying there like that? There's one thing after the other. That is covenant money. It's a tithe. It's not mine. It's covenant money. Agreement with God. If you do this for me, I'll do this. If we break our covenant with God, it is our responsibility to confess our sins to him and receive his mercy. When we depart from unrighteousness, we receive his grace. And then we, we cheer up, we clear. The boy is a pilot. This that money is covenant money. These are the things that sustain this ministry. Agreement. God's word cannot fail without God failing. Because you need to know where that money comes from. It's a tithe. Let's go to that Malachi 3, verse 6 to 12. Malachi 3, verse, verse 6. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. 
and I do not change. I don't change. That is why you descendants of Jacob are not already destroyed. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have scorned my decrees and failed to obey them. Now, return to me and I will return to you. Return to me and I will return to you. Says the Lord of heaven's armies. But you ask, how can we return when we have never gone away? Verse 8. Should people cheat God? Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. Mm -hmm. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. Verse 9. You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take in. Where Tried. are these blessings? Where there's no room to take in? There's so much. Where are these blessings? Where there's so much that you can't. You need help from your neighbor. This word of God we are reading here, issue of tithe this, is not meant for members of the church, meant for business people. It's meant for churches also. A man of God must tithe. Your ministry must also tithe. But we stand like this, we want to preach and tell people to tithe. That is why uh, you members of the church, you don't hear me talking about tithe this. But can't you ask yourself, why this ministry is not going down? Irrespective of people not tithing, people without a covenant with God, why is it not going down? Why am I not becoming angry? Because I'm doing my part and I'm testing God to see, will you do what you promised? And I keep seeing him doing it. Continue where you left. If you do this, says the Lord of heaven armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Verse 11. Your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they arrive, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Verse 12. Then all nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord of heaven's armies. That's it. That's it. Covenant. What is yours is mine. And what is mine is yours. We keep testing God in this ministry. You say this, we do it. Can you do what you said? Yes, sir. I tithe to the foundation. We have supporter people coming to support the foundation. They partner with the foundation. But my tithe is the first one that entered there. It's a sure thing. Even when they are trying to check the budget, they know that my tithe is the one who entered there first. The ministry itself, we take out the tithe. It goes to a ministry where God has laid. This covenant is not anyone who tell you where to. It is your agreement, your deal, your promise with God. Who told Jacob to do what he did? Was it a, a pastor? A prophet? Was the prophet there? You 
you need to have your covenant to go. I don't need to know it. That's why I'm not telling you mine. But this covenant sustain our ministry, my ministry. It sustain my ministry. That's why I ask you, what is your ministry? A bird cannot fly with one wing. There are two wings in every ministry, two departments, administration and operational, which is the spiritual department. But the spiritual department is the most important, not the only important, the most important department in any ministry. Why? Because it destroys the work of the devil and put the word of God into the heart of the people. While administration is sustaining so meaning operational ministry is 80%, while administration is 20%. So if you're focusing on administration ministry, you neglect. You are running 20%, trying to grow ministry with 20% strength. Do you see the potential that is in you? and in others. But there's no other wing. It's only one. You can't fly. You can only jump. You can only leap. The rising, I mean, the cause of the rising and falling. That's all. So when you leave here, you go to your house, go to talk to God of Abraham. God of Jacob and make a covenant with him. If you have not, if you have broken the covenant, go and confess your sin to him and receive his mercy and renew the covenant. That's all. It is your responsibility to confess to him. You can't come to my office and say to me, man of God, this is my covenant. It is between you and the one you desire to be with one day in the kingdom of heaven. When we run our institution, our ministries, without having covenant with God, it seems like we are doing what we are doing for surviving alone, not also for building the kingdom of God, where you desire to be one day. Quote me right. I say, if you are doing what you are doing without having a covenant with God, it seems like you are doing what you are doing for survival alone, not also for building God's kingdom. You run to this church, you run to this. If you have a covenant with God, anywhere you go, it will work for you. You keep running from one church to another, but you don't have covenant with God. Look what God has been turned to. You have transformed creator into a supermarket. No covenant. If you have a covenant with God, anyone that touches you is touching God. Anyone that touches your business is touching God. You have a contract. You have a deal with God. You have partnered with the creator, the most high God. So, it is yours to choose. The greatness is yours. If I become great, your greatness cannot be compared to mine. You'll be great in your own space. I'm great in my own space. This is differentiated by the covenant we have made with our creator. You 
move to this church, you move to this church, there is no covenant. You continue to receive what you are looking for, you continue to lose it. Because it is yours alone. You are not in partnership with God. Do you see how merciful God is? People are running their institution without, his, without agreement with him. Without his, but he's just watching and looking. We keep communicating in different ways. I want to tell you people, God is great. God is great. When you tell me that you are suffering with this, you are stuck with this. Covenant. That is a key. This is time of recreation. Recreation means think about your future and your past mistakes and how can you correct them. This is what we call leadership secret. It is time to recreate. Tell your neighbor it is time to recreate. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. What is recreation? Thinking about what? And what? And how can you correct? That is leadership secret. Think about your past mistakes and your future, where you desire to be, and see how can I correct. This is a secret of leadership. What is good for me is good for you. I'm not here to be a centered man. We are not here to celebrate me. We are here to celebrate Jesus through his word, by his spirit. So what I know, you need to know. What I do, you need to, and look at, you see there's no competition. Imagine when you live here and you are going to your own room, only God is going to hear you. Where competition is there? There's no room for competition. Your covenant becomes your mystery. What you discuss with God in your private, it becomes what? Your mystery. Can you be destroyed? Can challenges surmount you? No. Covenant keeping God, there is no one like you. Alpha and Omega, there is no one like you. to advise you, I'm not criticizing anything here. Are you listening? I'm not condemning anything. Ministers of God, business people, let's stop hiding under food parcel we give to people. That is good. You know why it is good? Because it is a starter. People are hungry, but they need food, not food parcel. We are not discouraging issuing, you do charity, you do good person. When you look at Prophet T.B. Joshua, blessed memory, oh my God, the covenant he had with God was out of this world. When you look at it, Giving food parcel this, you, many lost sight. They say, oh, oh, this is how it is done. Food parcel are cheap. He took people to school. He built churches.
What of that area? Ask your neighbor, what of that area? But we have stuck with food parcels. Fish oil. Iwiza. Salt. You give to people. Which is good, but it is a starter. The real thing is the food. Take people to school. Change, even if it's one child. Make a difference. You don't have to overwhelm yourself. Even if it's one who's not your blood. <laughs> Whom you don't associate with, you just, which even if just one. And you have also checked the discipline. You're not just throwing. You check the discipline. He's hardworking, she's hardworking. You don't just begin to, you too, you become disciplined in your assessment. You don't just waste money sending a, a child who's having boyfriend, girlfriends all over the place. When he's supposed to graduate, he's graduating different way. <laughs> when we want, he was building like this. There are chairs you are sitting on. We become a manual PV partner, but you still bring money back to buy the chairs you are sitting on. Look at the covenant. This is where your greatness is lying. I say this is where your greatness is lying. Amen. In your covenant. Amen. That's all. That is all. It's lying there. And the good thing about covenant, it has nothing to do with any pastor, any prophet, any apostle. It's what you decide with God. That's why I ask, where, who was with Jacob? Who was, say, do they, do they? He himself. He make a deal with God. He make an agreement with the Most High God. And he tell God, if you are going to do this, you see, this is an element of doubt. But he was even telling him that if you are going to do all these things, you are saying, if you are going to do this, this is what I'm going to do. That is element of what? But he did it in any way. This is my message to you. How to complete your ministry. Go back to your home, your town, your country. Work on completing your ministry. Why? Why? Because a bird cannot fly with what? A shame. You don't know that God is talking. It's an irony. He's talking to you. <laughs> you are that bird that you are saying, a shame. Mm, come, 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 come. You are calling yourself. When you are ministers of God, and you saw a move of God in the past that you don't see now. When you tell me a laugh, I say, ah, this one is a favorite. It, God doesn't want to lose him. You know they are favorite in the kingdom? Mm. It's honest. They are favorite. Who are the favorite? Those who can perform or see what they used to see before. They are favorites. God has just withhold. They are struggling. How... How can this thing happen? Vision. How can you happen? This I used to. You are a favorite. God doesn't want to lose you. He has lost many, but unfortunately, or fortunately, you are among those he doesn't want to lose. As so you hear ministers of God crying, say, I used to see this, I would do this. I laugh. I say, Oh my God, favorite, no covenant. Hallelujah. Amen. That thing, it is still inside of you. Amen. Cannot go anywhere. It's in you. Covenant. You renew the covenant. <laughs> That's all. That is number one. Covenant. Huh? Two, which is the last one. Unity. First Corinthians 
12, 13. First Corinthians 12, verse 13. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. One spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks. Whether Jews or Greek. Whether slaves or free. Mm -hmm. And have all made to drink into one spirit. We all need to drink from what? Why are we fighting? Why are we fighting each other? If we are drinking from one spirit, you are you, I'm me, I'm myself, you are yourself. Why are we fighting each other? When we drink from what? One spirit. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. Verse 15. If the fool should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Verse 16. Mm, go back to 13 again with NIV. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body. As to form one body. Why are we fighting? This is another second principle after renewing your covenant. Yes, some of us, you here, you have covenant, but we need to, it has to be renewed. You renew your driver license every this year, <laughs> your days, and the covenant must be renewed from time to time. You need bigger blessing, renew the covenant. Read it again. For we were all baptized by one spirit, mm -hmm. so as to form one body. As to form one body. Mm -hmm. Whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. One spirit to what? To drink. When you drink that spirit, it opens your eyes. Another one, you drink that spirit, it gives you power to do miracle. Another one, drink that spirit, it gives you power to make money. Another one, drink that spirit, but at the end, is to make us one. You drink that spirit, it gives you great faith. You drink that spirit, it gives you healing. But one spirit, when he enter, he, he choose which area he wants to operate. And he look at the location you are in, the area you are in, and the surrounding spiritually, environment you are in. See, now when you want to compete with everybody, you have forgotten your location. The spiritual climate of your environment. When I came to this when God released me to the city Bluefontein to start the manifestation of evil spirit, I don't think they have ever been seen in this country. Where demons climb on top of a church in a few seconds. On top of a church. <laughs> Telling me that you are delivering Ha! Huh. We will destroy the roof of the church. While I'm doing deliverance, security is coming with a the phone. They want to give cell phone. Hello, hello, hello. Say the roof of the church has fallen. This church, this roof, everything is documented, camera. And then I, I want to come with issue of prophecy in Bluefin, then I want to be a prophet here. Your location has to do with what was God has invested in you. Some areas of gifting cannot withstand the challenges of your environment where you are. You are looking for something that cannot stand the challenges of the environment. Then, that time, 
we want to erect a tent. It took two days to erect a tent of the size of this church. The wind was for two days nonstop. We all know that when there's wind, when it goes to night, it has to what? Mm, it will subside. When they start holding the poles for tent, it starts throwing the tent up. Ooh, ooh. Then on the second day, a man from the contractor erecting there, they went to try to, the wind blew the man with the tent up. The man flew. And he come down and he hit the ground. Immediately he hit the ground, he stood up and ran for his life. We have a railroad here. He was going that direction. <laughs> what, what will a, a prophetic gift do? This is where apostolic ministry is needed. They left us stranded without a tent, and we want to open the land. Then I went to Nigeria. The prophet said, you know, you go to Nigeria, you go for prayer line. We pray, pray. When I go to meet him one on one, he look at me and say, you're not going. Where you have entered is very dangerous for you. You need to stay with me for a month for covering. For spiritual, he used the word spiritual fortification. Then I stay. Everybody's expecting me to come. Pastor went to Nigeria. They saw Pastor Emmanuel T. Pastor is not coming. <laughs> Second week, third week. Pastor has been told that you, have, you are entering a dangerous territory in the kingdom of Satan. You need to remain for spiritual fortification or else you will not survive. So do you see where we are now? You need to look where God has placed you. The gift you have has to do with where you are. They serve the purpose of the environment. <clears throat> Never look. Maybe by the time you have fulfilled the assignment and overcome, many gifts start operating because you are done. When you become obsessed, you want this one. You are looking for something that cannot help you to stand the challenges of that area. So do you see purpose in our ministry, our business, our church? That's purpose. Area way. Never struggle to prophesy, to heal. No. You need to be worried about your covenant with God. The rest follow. The rest what? Let's follow covenant. Agreement with God. Then at that time, each time I go for prayer, you know when you go for prayer, you go to kneel down. You pray. Each time I kneel down, I pray, I see vision. Every day, once I close my eyes like this, I see vision. Now, this grace, as time passed by, it's not happening anymore. But do you see that purpose it was saving at that time? Sometimes when I'm sitting in the office, I will just see a whirlwind coming here with a naked two man. Says, I'm Jezebel, I'm Jezebel. You are disturbing us. I just jam inside the office. While people are talking, I start talking to Jezebel. People say, uh uh, it's man of God mentor. We were talking, suddenly he keep quiet and he start talking to what we cannot see. So when you go back, your covenant with God, renew it. If it is not there, go and make one with him. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Let us rise up. How to complete our ministry. <clears throat> 